Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Jamie. Let's get to crafting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm starting off with this piece of wood and I found this in my garage. So this project cost me zero dollars. And then I'm also going to be using my new chop saw that I'm so excited that I uh, got at a yard sale. It was super cheap. It was like $30 and the guy just wanted to get rid of it because he had gotten a new one. So I was super excited to get this. So I'm just making my cuts and um, the long pieces are a foot long and then the short pieces are six inches. And of course I have to give a shout out to my husband because I was too lazy and didn't feel like bringing out my uh, camera stand so that I could get this on camera. So my husband uh, held the camera for me while I made my cuts. So <laughs> thank you, honey. <laughs> I cannot say enough how much I love this thing. It is just, it's so quick. It's so easy to use. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is so awesome. Like what else can I make with wood? Like just I want to like make everything now, <laughs> but anyway, if you are wanting a chop saw, if you are interested in doing wood projects, I highly recommend getting one. It is just, it's so easy to use. So the next thing I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be assembling my pieces using a combination of wood glue and my uh, Porter Cable um, nail gun. And um, as you can see, I am using a popsicle stick to apply the wood glue um, because, again, I'm kind of being lazy and I didn't feel like cleaning all the gunk out of the little nozzle thing. Um, my husband ends up doing that for me later on. He's so sweet. Um, but I just took the top off and I just, um, used the popsicle stick to apply my wood glue. So then I press really hard and then I use my nail gun to, uh, nail in the two side pieces first, uh, the two, well, the two short pieces first, and then I go and do the other long piece last. I'm also going to go ahead and apologize right now for my arm being in the way. I tried to get the best angle as I possibly could. I really only had so much space to work with. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I did my best. You can kind of see around my arm in some spots. So I, I did what I could. I Sorry, guys. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I did also sand my pieces before I started uh, nailing everything together. I didn't get any footage of it, so I apologize for that. But yes, I did sand both sides and the edges. You want to make sure you always sand your wood projects first. It just makes a huge difference. Okay, so back in the house at a better angle, <laughs> uh, I do have this um, very nice looking box. And I, like I said, I did sand it and everything. And then if you could see that darker edge, I wanted that to be my top. So I flip it over and then I wanted to assemble my bottom. So I use these uh, paint stir sticks. Now I wanted this to look more like a crate and that is why I'm using the stir sticks. So I'm just kind of lining them up and I do use wood glue to hold them down and I use my staple gun and unfortunately my camera kept shutting off on me because I think my sim card was like too full or something and I had to delete some old footage so I apologize I didn't get everything but I did get the last stick so you could see I did use some wood glue and uh, my staple gun. So I did want this to be extra sturdy so I do take some uh, three other paint sticks and I took them back outside with my chop saw cut them so that I could um, do a middle support piece so that you could put whatever you wanted in this uh, crate any even something that was heavy so I do use the wood glue and my staple gun again and then I put one in the middle and then uh, a stir stick on um, the two ends <laughs> This video is in part of a DIY challenge hosted by Heidi Sambel from Heidi Sambel DIY. She hosts these challenges monthly and they are so much fun. So I'm going to leave a link to her channel down below so you can go check out her channel in case you are not subscribed to her already. 
And I'm also going to leave a link to the playlist to all the other creators that are participating in this challenge. So when you are done with my video, you can click on that link and then you can hop on over to the next creator. So let's get back to the video. Okay, so now I'm going in with this white chalk paint that I had left over. It's by Kills, and um, I had used it on previous projects. And anyway, so I only had to do one coat of the white chalk paint um, inside and outside, all over this, um, all over my crate. So I'm using the uh, chippy paintbrush and um, going over this entire thing, but I do go in with a, um, a smaller paintbrush because the paint was getting in between the slats and kind of like bubbling up and not bubbling up, but just kind of dripping and stuff. And so I wanted to kind of smooth that all out with a different paintbrush. But anyway, I hear a lot of people call this one a chippy brush. Does anybody know why? Can anybody tell me? Is that even the right word? I don't know. So now I'm going to be using a combination of that same white chalk paint and I'm going to be using the black chalk paint by Craftsman and I want to go over this crate with um, some darker paint um, because there's a look that I am trying to go for but I don't want it to be so harsh of a black. I wanted to lighten it up a little bit um, like a really dark gray but like darker than like the elephant gray chalk paint if that makes any sense so I just add a little bit at a time the white chalk paint until I get the desired look that I'm looking for I know on camera it's probably still gonna look black but I don't want it to be so black if you can understand what I'm saying so anyway <clears throat> I just use the leftover paint stir stick stir that up really good and when I get the desired color that I am looking for I go back in with that same chippy brush I had already cleaned it up and um, I go over this. Now, what's really neat was that I pretty much only had to dip my paintbrush in this darker chalk paint um, like one time. There was like so much paint on there and it was just like the, the more I went, the, um, the desired look I was actually getting all over this crate and it just turned out so pretty looking. And I started out doing the one side of this and it, it was a little too dark and I, I just kept going over and over and over and trying to like take as much of the excess paint off of it. Um, and so I could do, I did the inside, I did all, I did all sides and, um, I, this, this turned out looking really good. I did end up having to do that first initial side that I did over again because then it ended up being too dark and I'll show you here in just a minute. So this is the part I wanted to show you really quick. So that first side that I had painted, um, it was so dark that it was not matching the rest of my box so or my crate. So I started using my stencil brush and tried dry brushing the white on there. And it just, it wasn't having the same look as the rest of the crate. So I just wanted you to see that, you know, um, the difference between dry brushing with the white versus painting your project white first and then kind of dry brushing with the darker color and you can see the, the two differences and um, since it didn't match I could not take it I had to start all over again so I did um, one coat of white on that and then um, once that was completely dry then I dry brushed the, um, the black paint on there. So now moving on to this printable, um, I had just gotten on Google Images and I typed in hot chocolate font and this is what came out. And so I'm going to, and I just printed it up on just regular computer paper, no big deal. I just cut it out um, just a little bit so that it was just a little easier to work with. And I'm just doing the transfer technique where since I'm trying to apply this on a darker surface, I'm using the chalk going over my word on the back with the chalk and then I put it onto my project and I'm using just a, um, what are those called? Uh, embroidery thingamabobber things? I don't know. Anyway, you can pick it up over at um, Dollar Tree. You could use a pencil, whatever you want to use. <clears throat> anyway, so I just trace my words out, and then when you lift it up, you can actually see that the chalk transfers on top of your project. So the last thing I do is I take this uh, white chalk 
um, pen from Dollar Tree and I just go ahead and just trace over my words and then this project is finished. So really quick, I just wanted to show you the picture of my inspiration piece. I have found this over at Hobby Lobby. I did not get the price. I want to say $24.99, but I could be completely wrong on it. I know my project is not exact, but this is my inspiration. I think this turned out so stinking cute. I love this so much that I'm probably just going to go ahead and make a second one so I can give it away as a gift. Everything that I decorated inside this crate, everything came from Dollar Tree. So this is a super fun, adorable um, gift to give away. Anyway, if you like this video, and I sure hope you did, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you do not miss a thing. And we'll see you next time. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. Bye.